Welcome to worship this morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of our risen and present Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we begin this morning, I'd like to welcome in particular any visitors we may have with us. If you're visiting, just raise a hand. I'd like to bring a, a little card your way as a way of greeting. I met these folks on the way in, visiting us from the Tampa area. Any other visitors with us this morning? I don't see any other hands going up. But whether member or guest, we're glad that God has called us here this morning to hear his word and receive his supper. It is the third Sunday of the month, and I see our ushers are ready with the Change for Change baskets, so I'll invite them forward. This month, our Change for Change offering will go towards shipping costs for hand-knit helmet liners for our military. Uh, these... Uh, have been mass-produced by some knitting hands, and um, I understand that they're in very high demand among those uh, who have seen them, or you know, uh, some of the troops have seen some of their comrades with them, and there's a great demand for these, but it costs a bit to get them overseas. So that's what this offering will go for, is to get those helmet liners to our troops. And while they're taking up that offering, I'll take care of a few other announcements. Our adult Bible study class on 1st and 2nd Thessalonians begins this morning in the library at 9.15. If you'd like to join in on that, just head downstairs to the library and they'll get you started. Also, confirmation Sunday classes begin today at 9.15. That will be in the scout room. And another um, education opportunity, that our seven-session study of the historical and biblical elements of the Lutheran Reformation continues this week. You can either attend Tuesday mornings at 8 a.m. at the Living Room Coffee Shop or Thursday evenings here in the Parish Hall at 6.30. Uh, you will 
come to understand more accurately just what it means to be Lutheran, and I don't think it has anything to do with Ludafisk or Lefsa. It's a little bit more involved than that. Um, I want to say a word of thanks to all the well wishes that I received in the last week, either electronically or in person, on the 10th anniversary of my installation here at Christus. And of course, it wasn't just me that was installed, as I think you all know. It was also my three ministry assistants, Anne, Claire, and Luke, who've all taken an active part here at Christus. And so uh, thank you. Um, I do make it a regular prayer of mine that God will keep me faithful um, to his call here to the congregation as long as he shall choose. Please do check your parish news for other information. There is quite a bit of other uh, happenings and information there. And it's time now for our stewardship moment. And since we're talking stewardship, guess what? I've got the money. Okay. 
path, but to God it makes a big difference. How so? Well, God wants us to make sure you give him our, our first fruits. He wants papaya? <laughs> no, no, our first fruits. Well, what are first fruits? Well, put it this way. The first thing we should do with anything we receive is give God his 10%. That way we won't forget and we'll be less tempted to keep all 100% to ourselves. I think I get it. If we kept it all ourselves, those other people would never get blessed. Well, they might not, so let's be sure we do our part to bless them and pay God first. It is his, after all. And he still lets us keep 90%. That's pretty generous. More generous than you'll ever know, Pat. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. We take this moment to confess the things of our heart and mind that has give us grief, shame, and sorrow, whether it be things of the past day, week, year or even long ago that weigh upon our heart Lord we confess these things the things we have done left undone and failed to do but for the sake of your son Jesus Christ have mercy on us all forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name we sing together our confessional hymn, Sanctuary. the good news. Titus 2.14 says, Jesus gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. On account of Christ, by his authority, and in his stead, I declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May, the, may, gr may grace and peace be multiplied to you. And also to you. 
Let us share the peace with one another. Please remain standing and join us in singing, give thanks. We join our hearts in praying together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, you send your Son. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Genesis, the 50th chapter. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, 
because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Our responsive psalm reading is taken from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who satisfies you with good. The Lord works righteousness. And justice for all who are he made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the, people of Israel. the Lord is merciful and gracious. Full of anger and long and love. He will not always chide. Nor will he, keep his anger forever. he does not deal with us according to our sins. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, as far as the east is from the west, here ends the psalm reading. The second lesson is from Romans, the 14th chapter. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day, observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account to God to give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Will the children please come forward for a children's message? Good morning. How are you all today? 
Pretty good. It's nice to see you all. Do any of you like baseball? Yeah? Do any of you play catch with your mom or dad? Yeah? Do you ever, do you ever have a time where it's thrown up in the air and you try to catch it in your glove like that? Well, a couple months ago, I was watching some, uh, a sports show and they were showing clips from a baseball game that were played by young people. These were kids uh, pretty young. It was called the, the um, uh, it's the World Series for, the Little League World Series. It's for boys, and sometimes there's girls in it, but uh, they, they play baseball, and they play against teams across the country. And there was a team from Texas, and there was a team from Pennsylvania. And uh, it, was, it was a very closely played game. And this boy from Texas, he hit this ball. And if he hit this ball and he hit it well, it would have been able to brought one of his friends in and scored and they would have won the game. And all the boy in the field had to do was is to stop him from scoring. Well, they pitched the ball to the kid from Texas and he hits the ball. And it flies way up in the sky and there's this one little boy in the outfield. And he's He's, he's judging the ball. He's waiting for it to come down. He runs up and it goes, whoop, right behind his head. And, and, and all of a sudden, he kind of freezes because he realized he made a mistake. And rather than reacting quickly, he stood there and it allowed not just one, but two people to come in and they lost the game. And so this boy who missed the, missed the catch how would you feel if you made a mistake like that? You'd probably feel kind of sad, wouldn't you? If you lost the game, not just for yourself, but for a whole team, right? Well, this boy, he starts walking out, and the kid who hit the ball sees this boy just kind of just completely upset. And he is walking back towards his dugout. Well, after he, after he goes and scores the points, rather than giving high fives to, this ki- uh, to this, his teammates, he turns around and he ran. This boy, he was, he was, he was crying already. He was walking back to his, his, his dugout. But this boy from Texas walks up to him, taps him on the shoulder, and this kid turns around, and the boy from Texas just gives him a big hug. And what I mean to talk about this is that sometimes you and I make a mistake we feel is really, really big, whether it's we don't do well at school or maybe we've done something naughty at home, or things that we made maybe a kind of a mistake, right? Well, G- God acts like that little boy from Texas. He sees that we make mistakes, right? And what does God do when we make mistakes? Does he stay angry at us? No. God comes over, even though sometimes other people, like eventually the boy's teammate saw that he was upset and turned around and gave him a hug. But that boy taught not just his team, but everybody that lesson about kind of how God treats us. That we do things wrong, but when we realize we do something wrong and we turn towards God, he greets us just like that boy greeted the other boy. He gives us this big hug of forgiveness. And so wherever you may be, no matter what you may do, know that when you say you're sorry for what you've done, God, through Jesus Christ, forgives all your sins, all our mistakes. And that, yes, it might be embarrassing for a little while, but God will help you to find good friends and good people who will help you to keep trying. Isn't that good? So remember that, that God is forgiving and that we, we, it's okay to forgive ourselves as well. That's important. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love, even when we make mistakes. Help us to forgive ourselves and others who make mistakes. In Jesus' name, amen. Good to see you.
please rise for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, uh, uh, as seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to settle account of with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of the servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when they, that, ser, that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him. He began to choke him and saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what he had take what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, "You, you wicked servant! I forgave all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have mercy on your fellow servant as I have mercy on you?" And in anger, his master delivered him to, the, him to the jailer until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Please, you, Lord Please be seated. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You might have seen this before, but uh, the other day, as we were at the mall, we were doing one of those deals where Amber had a lot of things to get for the girls, and I went for child control. And in the Fox Valley Mall, they have this little area in the food court where there's a lot of children who can come and play on these little animal things that they can climb on and play with. And I stayed rather close to uh, my girls, but you know, sometimes nowadays you see there's all, all the kids are in the area and you see the row of parents on their cell phone just going this like every once in a while looking up to see if their child is alive or not. But it was funny because there was a turtle and this turtle had great size to it. And all of a sudden there was two babies who were kind of drooling and coming up to it. And one gets to the top, but then this other one who wanted saw it as well, and he got angry. And so he smacked the other baby and the baby fell off. And it looked like a pro wrestling match between toddlers on a big turtle. <laughs> These babies were angry. They thought this person had what I want, what I needed. And what am I going to do? Hit him. Hit him hard. Get revenge. Why? Because that baby's got what I want. Children express a lot of what we express with our anger. When someone has wronged us, we might not drool when we do it, and we might not have anything in our pants, but either way, <laughs> we respond like these children. We get angry. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We want revenge. We want what we want. Why? Because it's ours. 
when we get hurt in life, we all respond differently. Some may react like the baby and fight and want to hit and get revenge. You know, I've seen people, you know, you know, hear about people keying other people's cars when they're too close. You, you, adults do the same thing. But then we have some people who take their anger differently. They bottle it up. They suppress it. They let it just get to them and get to them and get to them. They push back, push down, push down, and eventually pop. Or we have the people who maybe because they feel like they don't deserve anything in the world, but even though they're angry, they lay down and let whoever stomp on them stomp on them. We have many ways we, re we reply with anger, with hurt and pain. In our gospel text today, we learn of Peter. We don't know the entire story, but Peter was asking about how many times he should forgive a brother. And sometimes, even for people in the church, we wonder the same thing of how often we should forgive. Because I don't know about you, but when somebody does me wrong and they keep the same habit over and over and over again of hurting us, I do not like throwing out a blank check of forgiveness. Sometimes you might say, I forgive you, but do we really? And now if we don't do this, where do we stand with God? We are people who get angry, we get bitter. But what do we do with this anger? So Peter asked, how many times am I to forgive? How many? How often? And Jesus turns the question through this parable of the un... Well, this, the, the, graceful, uh, the graceful and... Um, the, the, the master who gives this full grace to the servant. He gives him full and complete grace. And then shows what the servant does to his other servants. Through this parable, Jesus changes the question for us. Not how many times, but how much God forgives us. You and I aren't very good at it forgiving ourselves alone, let alone a neighbor who's done us wrong. When we stand at the feet of the cross and we look at what Jesus has done for us, we can see how much God forgives us. He loves us so much and forgives us so much that he's willing to pay complete and full all your sins. That when Jesus died on the cross, your mistakes, whatever it may be of today, tomorrow, of the past, those things that give you grief, give you pain, and give us sorrow. Because we all have them, and sometimes we don't deal with them until the very end. I went to a funeral uh, this last Thursday, and the question was whether... This person, right before they died, it was one of our aunts. She had great grief and sorrow before she died, and she was a very faithful Christian. But the good news for her, for any of us who have regrets in our past, that you and I, who have been claimed through the waters of baptism, that when in your baptism... Jesus said to you completely and fully, even when you're a little baby, that I love you, I forgive you, and nothing of today, tomorrow, or the future will ever separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our God loves us so much that he knew what we're going to do, how often we were going to do, how often we were going to sing or sin against him. 
But despite all those pains, and despite knowing what he had to do, he did it for you completely and fully, even though you do not deserve it on your own. When we sit at the feet of Jesus a little longer, I think it, we will start to see and fully understand what Jesus has done for you. Then we maybe might be able to get a hold of our anger. I have a, you know, I'm just like you. We're all just like each other. We all have pain. We have suffering. We all have anger. And we let our mouths, our actions get in our ways from being those people of grace and sorrow. Our great grace and forgiveness. We rather dwell in sorrow. We rather dwell in revenge. The way the world reacts to each other. But along with the forgiveness we're given in our baptism, we are given that Holy Spirit who through time hopefully would help us to see what Jesus has done for us, but also what we need because as much as we don't forgive our neighbors, we are just as hard on ourselves. But when we sit in that cross, we sit in the presence of that Holy Spirit who has given us that forgiveness, who dwells in our heart. He should see how much Christ has forgiven us. Psalm 103, that we read responsibly together, gives us a beautiful image of how much God forgives us, despite our inability or unwillingness to forgive our neighbors. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to your sin, nor repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. How much are you forgiven? As far as the east is the west, how high is the heavens from us? Unmeasurable amounts of grace and mercy. And this day going forth, when we come and receive his, the Lord's Supper, he'll give us that same forgiveness once again, despite your unwillingness to forgive your neighbor. But with this grace, maybe we, when we come in repentance, we ask God, to maybe realize how much he has done for us and turn to that loved one. You know, sometimes it, it, as hard as it is between the people who have the conflict, it's twice as hard for the people who, who want to be together but know these two are in conflict, whether it be parents who are a divorce or maybe a people in a family member or a big family gathering and everyone's there and they know that there's a little bit of tension between this uncle and this other uncle or whatever it may be. Anger and pain and sorrow affects everyone in the whole family. But with this grace of Jesus, maybe we can open our hearts to say that, you know what, it's not worth it. Because the worst things we have are at those funerals where we have those people who have died and Jesus and we say, Oh, I wish I would have said I'm sorry. I wish I wouldn't have gone out with these pains and feelings. I believe this is what is one of the saddest things we see in this world. But the good news is today we have forgiveness in Christ, and today we have that opportunity to turn to that child who maybe misbehaves and remind them that you still love them. 
maybe not the behavior, but you still love them. Go to that other loved one that you have been bitter against. Maybe that co-worker that you've been holding a grudge against and say, hey, let's have peace. I believe that's what the cross does for us. It makes us realize that if God, who is the author of all life, is able to forgive, not, forgive us, why shouldn't we forgive our neighbors? So may you have the peace in your life of knowing that our Christ Jesus, our Lord, has forgiven us so much as far as the east and the west, and that nothing of this life, nothing of our own anger, will separate you from his love. Amen. Please stand. Together with the saints of all times and places, we confess the one true faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. You may be seated. We unite our hearts in prayer. Father in heaven, keep us ever mindful of how much you have forgiven us so that we will both live repentant lives and readily forgive those who turn to us in repentance. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, be with those who have lost much in the recent hurricanes. Grant them the reassurance of your care and provision and fill them with hope for days ahead. Bless also your many servants who are so selflessly giving help. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, guard and keep in your care all who are sick, lonely, or overwhelmed with grief or despair, that they may be comforted and healed according to your good and gracious will. In their need, help them to look to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world that no darkness can overcome. Lord, in your mercy. Help us gracious God, to gladly and generously support and join in the work of your church on earth, both in our own congregation 
and throughout our state, nation, and world, so that your gospel will fill the earth and your name be praised. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you search the heart, and nothing is hidden from you. You feel our hurt, and you delight in our joy. Hear those things in our hearts for which we have no words, and in your tender mercy answer. Father, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us for the sake of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose holy name we pray. Amen. We bring forth our tithes and our offerings. We stand and pray together the offertory prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you richly supply. Our Lord Jesus, on the night which he betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. He had given thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Lord, keep us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. the body. 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of your sins, and the promise of eternal life. Please be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and mind and keep you in true faith. And by his authority, I declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please join us in singing, Refresh My Heart. <laughs> Peace to fear God, love God, and trust God.